it's time for another amazing chemistry video with Mr. Stapleton. Proudly sponsored by Farming Doing Nice Coffee. All right, here's the second um, short video. This one's going to be much shorter around electronic configurations, and I'm going to focus purely on the transition metals. So in the last video, what I went through was writing your electronic configurations using your subshell notation here, so using this chart and using the number of electrons here. So make sure you've got that down pat before you start to try the transition metals. Okay, we looked at a couple of rules where we looked at the fact that non-metals, when they form ions, they fill their highest shells and look how metals always lose the highest shell electrons first. What I'm going to introduce is this um, concept around transition metals and they're going to follow this same rule here, okay, that metals always lose their highest shell electrons first. However, I'm going to introduce something a little bit different as well, okay? Transition metals always lose their 4s electrons, higher shell electrons first. Every transition metal that you need to do has that um, electronic configuration with a 4s, okay? So I'm going to go through and show you some of those, okay? So I'm going to go to zinc, which has an atomic number of 30, okay? Um, so I'm going to show you the electron configuration using that subshell notation. I'm going to go through it quickly, so um, if you don't get this, go back to the previous video. So it's 1s2, just following through here, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, so I'm up to here, counting it up, 2, 4, 10, 20, I need 10 more. I get to the d orbital, and the d can hold a maximum of 10. So that's the electronic configuration for zinc, okay, with a full um, d orbital there. All right. Notice that even though the d is at the end, the 4 here is the highest electron shell. Okay. Now, when we form an ion for this, which is zinc 2 plus is the most common form, we lose these highest electrons first, okay? Because they are actually in the fourth shell. We don't lose them from the D right at the end. So the electron configuration for zinc is in the iron form is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. The 4s is gone, 3d10, okay? So it's the same as doing your, um, your other metals before. However, what you're doing this time is losing your highest electron shells still, but this time it's the 4s. So don't make that mistake of taking them off the end here. Always lose your 4s electrons first, okay? Now, you can do that for any of the transition metals. However, there are two very, very important exceptions which you must learn, and they will always, 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 always ask you about one of these in the exam, because it's in the curriculum, okay? so. They're either going to look at chromium, all right, which is 24, or they're going to look at copper, which is 29. Okay. Now, when you're going through and doing these electronic configurations, firstly, all right, you do them like you do normally. All right. So chromium 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d4. Now, that should be your normal electronic configuration, okay? However, there's something special about the d orbitals that you need to know. And I'll actually rub this out a little bit. Every orbital, you'll notice that if we come back to this chart here, every orbital is in multiples of 2, 2, 6, 10, okay? Now, what we've actually got within the d orbital is some individual little sites. We've actually got five individual little sites here. And these individual little sites can each hold two electrons. Okay, so this can hold two electrons, this can hold two electrons, this can hold two electrons, and so on. Okay, so we've got them all three here. Now, we know that electrons repel each other. Okay, so if you put two negative charges together, all right, they're going to repel. That's what makes sense. So if we're talking about chromium here, we've got a 4s shell here, which has two electrons in it. So they're going to repel each other. And we've got the d orbital here, the 3d, which has these one, two, three, four electrons like that. They're spread out because when they put them next to each other, they're going to repel. Up here, if we put these together, they're going to repel each other. What we've got down here is an empty orbital. So we take that electron out of here and we put the electron down here. That actually makes it far more stable. You don't have electrons repelling each other. 
But what that does to your electronic configuration is changes what's happening here. So instead of 4S2, we're actually now 4S1 and we're 3D5, okay? So when you're writing the electronic configuration for Chromium, it's actually 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S1, 3D5. In order to separate all those electrons, minimize the repulsion and make it more stable. Okay, copper is the same thing. So the easy way to remember is the CR and the CU. Okay, copper is 29, and it goes along the same sort of formula. What we do is we have one electron in the forest. That's a higher energy shell electron. So electrons up there have more energy. So it's more favorable to have the full shell down the bottom. Okay, like this, the 3D10, 4S1. Once you go up to zinc with 4S2, it doesn't matter. All right, if you go down below chromium, all right, to 3D4, 4S2, that again, that, uh, sorry, 3D3, 4S2, it doesn't really matter. So you must, 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 I'm gonna write this in red here, must learn these, okay? And there's no substitute for just remembering that both chromium and copper have 4S1 orbitals in there, okay? I'm gonna put that in lots and lots of questions for you, so hopefully you remember it. Commit those to memory, learn them, okay? When you form um, ions with these, it then goes through and follows exactly the same rule as we went before when we were looking at it. So if I leave up the chromium one up here, chromium normally forms a three plus charge. So we see our three plus, okay? So what we do is we lose the highest shell electrons first. That's our rule. We lose their four electrons, we lose one out of that. We've still got two more to lose. So we're gonna lose two out of that to make it a three. So the electronic configuration for chromium three plus, one S2, two S2, two P6, three S2, three P6, three D3. That's the electronic configuration for chromium. All right, might take you a little bit of time to get the hang of these. Okay, so practice and practice and practice them. You've gotta go up to um, atomic number 32 to be able to do this, which is strontium, okay? So make sure you can um, do them, make sure you can do the ions as well, and practice chromium and copper. All right, if there's any questions, just ask me. Thanks, guys.